Hey everyone, I'm Ari and I'm here for first updates now at the New England District Championship. We're here with Team 8085 Mojo and they're going to take us through some of the features on their robot that leads to being one of the best single substation robots here. I'm here with Gavin, Nate and Joey and Violet. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robotics Competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. If you're attending championships, come to the Fun and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the Fun and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the Fun or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. All right, so we had a few goals with our robot starting off the season. So we want it to be small, and compact so as we're good for balancing and so that way we could get on the charge station and really allow our team's members to balance well and then also we wanted to be able to uh score high which is another important feature and be fast and go to the single substation so it could do cycles as quickly as possible so going to the single substation, you have to really design for that. So can you take us through a few of your features of the intake and how that works? So when we first started off with the season, we were doing practice matches and we were trying to drop cones and cubes out of the single substation onto the ground for pickup. But we realized that getting the arm down to the floor intake position and then getting it back up after intaking took too long and we were wasting way too much time. So after looking at 6, uh, 620... 6329 and seeing how they were just picking up straight from the single substation without even going to the floor we decided to copy that idea because the geometry of our robot and that saved us a lot of time with uh, picking up and intaking so one of the things uh, about our intake that allows us to pick up from the single substation is you can see it's a passive intake there's no uh, motor or pneumatics that actively open and close our uh, claws so it means that as soon as the piece is slid down from the single substation, our robot will pick it up as long as it's positioned correctly without the operator having to actively open and close the claws. It makes it a lot easier for lining up, and it means that there's a lot less uh, human error that can be involved. So we, the robot is essentially uh, running it on its own. So you've got a pretty cool tilted elevator design here. So what was your prototyping behind that and the thought processing there? Processing there? So uh, we were inspired by one of the Robot in Three Days videos that we saw. They had a very simple elevator, which is something that um, as a team doing our first elevator, we wanted to prioritize. Uh, it's a two-stage elevator. And originally, we had uh, a, an elevator that without a carriage, which is this, this piece right here. Um, and because of that, we weren't able to keep our CG low, something that we really wanted to prioritize um, for this game, since we knew that lots of robots being really tall might have an issue of being tippy. Um, so for that reason, we decided to make it a continuous elevator in which we use magnets up, up here, um, and down, or sorry, down here, um, which keep the stages in the correct sequencing, meaning that this carriage moves up first, and then the next most outer stage and then the most outer stage and that allows us to pick up from the single substation by only moving one portion of our elevator um, and also allows us to pick up from the ground while only moving the carriage really cool systems that work all together in tandem really well so can we see a few of this a few of these in action we're gonna start with the single substation pickup after we reset the arm good yep so you can see there's not a lot of movement here um, which is something we're really good okay. good uh, which we wanted. Uh, uh, initially, we had our arm reaching much higher into the single substation, uh, but an issue you had with that was, what it was it was much harder to line up. And also, as we were driving out, we would sometimes get these claws in here stuck on the side. So after our first competition, we decided that we were gonna keep it much lower and ask our human player to push the pieces a little more so that it still reached our intake, but it would be much faster and it, it wouldn't get caught anymore. Well, thank you for that demonstration. So that's a good sum summation of your teleop modes. What do you guys do in autonomous and what makes it special? Yeah, so right now we have two main autos that we use. One of them, 
we call them all kind of strange names. Uh, sidekick is the one that we've been using the most in playoffs. First it scores high, then it goes out, picks up a cube, scores the cube, and then it, we have it turn around and face right back so that when we get into Teleop, we can go straight for that single substation. Uh, the other auto we use is called Dynamic Duo. Dynamic Duo starts in the middle, it does high cone, it goes out, picks up a cone, and then docks with the cone. Uh, we're working in the future on having a limelight balance, but we don't have that there uh, 100%. What we're really committed to when it comes to autonomous is something that's consistent and reliable so that we can get that last ranking point. So we decided that docking 100% of the time was better than having an auto balance that works like 50% of the time and you keep slipping off and not even getting any of those points in autonomous. Um, another thing we use programming to do actually during teleop is our cardinal directions. So one of the ways that we line up with a single substation so well is we're able to press a button on the operator controller that immediately turns it uh, 90 degrees in line with the substation so that we're really able to coordinate that easily and well. Um, another thing that we did was ensuring that we have safe positions. So we want to go full speed when we can, but we don't want to be going full speed in situations where we've got the elevator fully extended because we're scoring a cone or a cube. We don't want to let people be able to turn too much or go too fast. So we have certain barriers that come in place when the elevator is fully extended to protect it and make sure that we have those precautions. So one of the new things we actually just added, um, which we are again inspired by Buck's Wrath, is while we're placing, we wanted to have our arm get put into the set position a little bit quicker. Um, so we decided to angle the elevator as we drive into the community zone um, and adjusted our, so yeah, so right here. And that way, as soon as, instead of having to alter the altitude, which it moves slower than the extension because the altitude dropping is only um, affected by gravity, as you can see over here, these pulleys just allow that the elevator to come down. We don't have an active motor um, bringing it down. So to speed that process up a little bit, uh, we have it drop into this position as soon as we enter the community area. And then from there, Joey can score high if you want to show that off real quick. I got it. Yep. Go ahead, score high. So we can reach all the way out and then place it. Yeah. And so it just speeds up the whole process a little bit. Well, that is one stellar robot, Team 8085. Good luck on the competition fields, and we'll see you out there. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robox competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.